What's up and welcome to Let's Talk, a segment within our future Black History Month where we're talking to the leaders of today that will be celebrating in the future. I'm your host, Brandon Drayton, and I'm sitting here with BuzzFeed Cocoa Butter's Jameer Pond, marketing and content strategist Omar White, and Yahoo News reporter Marquise Francis. My first question is, what is blackness to you and how do you celebrate that? To me, blackness is all about the experience, um, and that includes the culture, everything from the food, down to what you wear, down to how you talk, how we express ourselves. There's no other experience in this country or in this world like being black and um, something I'm grateful to experience. One way I try to exemplify that just in my walking life is just be my black self every day. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that means no matter which room I walk in, what space I occupy, being me authentically and um, making it a point to make sure that black men and women are represented in those spaces. And we started a lot of this, right? Mm-hmm. You see other cultures trying to appropriate who we are, what we're about, um, but they can't really be us. They can't have our hairstyles. They can't talk the way we do. They can't have the same swag, charisma, whatever you want to call it. So black is beautiful. Black is the originators. Black is excellent. That's what that is to me. Being black is is, is something more than uh, just a, a color. It, it, it's it's an experience. Um, it is beautiful and it's rich. It's um, empowering. I love being black. Omar, you touched on one point that I want to jump on you said representation which i think yes. is very important um when would you say is the first time you saw good representation of black men was that in your house was that on tv was that in media i would say and i guess it's kind of sad to say it would definitely have to be um in the media just growing up in a single parent home which is me and my mom so i didn't really have that kind of black male influence growing up so um i kind of had to search for it but i wouldn't even say that i searched for it as far as First thing I think about is like Denzel Washington. Um, I don't know why he's like the epitome of like a black man. <laughs> yeah. And for me, it was kind of like a catch twenty two. Not only being black, but being a black gay man, it's really hard to. Um, I think to this day, I don't. I don't really look in the media and find someone who I immediately identify with. I'm like that guy is just like me. And I don't. And being black doesn't have you know one shade to your mm-hmm. point. Different colors or, you know, there's tons of representation out there. But I think it's a matter of for us, um, really. What am I trying to say? Like it can be tough to find and I think the fact that you even have to ask ask the question mm-hmm. you know when was the first time you saw a representation of a black man is the, a problem in and of itself growing up I grew up in the 90s so uh, there was a big media explosion of blackness on television um, so I can remember just wanting to be like Dwayne Wayne from a different world kid and play Blair Underwood Denzel Washington a lot of these big figureheads who you know I don't know them personally but you know Will Smith Martin Lawrence these people raised me when I was young when I couldn't I didn't have that influence like my father was there but like on a day-to-day basis these people raised me and it was such a great experience to kind of grow up and watch this explosion of blackness in the 90s with rap music and television and sports and music and pop culture black kind of was the standard and it still is the standard my dad definitely was someone i looked up to my grandfather i knew they weren't perfect but i knew they had character traits about them that i wanted to emulate absolutely they weren't the most uh compassionate or even just like loving to you know I never saw my parents embrace you know or kiss Mm, mm. but I knew he always wanted to provide I knew in some sense I wanted to emulate him and provide and be the man of the house but I also wanted to be you know show, show more love right and I think we're entering this amazing space now where men are able to feel men are able to talk about their feelings um so I think for me, just having my dad and my grandfather, I was able to learn a lot from them, but also learn what I didn't want. I started therapy last year, mm. and it was one of the most eye-opening things that I ever did for myself. How important is mental health? Because I really hope everyone understands the importance of it. Yeah, I, I started therapy last year, mm. and it was one of the most eye-opening things that I ever did for myself right because I think you go throughout life and you are programmed in a certain way there's a certain standard of what manhood is there's a certain standard of what being black is when I went to therapy I realized that it was for the first time it was okay to live we survive so much as black men and black people in this country in this world surviving being resilient these are things that we always had to be we are never given a chance to just be and live and therapy 
broke down a lot of walls like for, for me uh, between talking to my father and my mom between alleviating people in my space that I didn't feel like were necessary and just really understanding like what do I love who am I why do like why should I love myself why is it important to feed myself good energy? And I can say that being in therapy uh, consistently for about like six to eight months so far has been just life changing. What about you, Marquise? I mean, for me, I think you just you know, said earlier, we all grew up in the 90s and I just feel as though it was cool to not feel. It was cool Absolutely. to be hard. It was cool to yeah. dress a certain way, treat women or your partners a certain way. Yep. I will say, I feel like in 2020, it's cool to feel. Yeah. It's cool to express yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. even when I'm meeting women or whatnot, it's cool to show you're vulnerable, mm -hmm. right? And I think it's just figuring out how to best approach situations, you know, being able to say no, being able to say yes when the time is right, using your words and being intentional about them, I think is mm -hmm. really important. You really can't help others if you're not good yourself. I personally don't go to therapy. I'm not opposed to it whatsoever. I just haven't incorporated that into mm -hmm. my life. Agreed. But I do appreciate people like a Charlemagne, you know, who a lot of people find problematic, but he makes it normal, right? To be able to say he goes to therapy every Friday at two o'clock. Mm -hmm. He says something every time mm -hmm. on an interview, but it's becoming more normalized, right? And I know a lot of, for a lot of black people, we also want to have black therapists, right? You know, yes. and I think mm -hmm. that's a big thing. And I, I had an event at my job um, where we able to bring in therapists, but they weren't black. And we could see the disconnect with yes. the black population yep. and the non-black therapists. Mm -hmm. So, it's important not only to have therapists, but have therapists who are able to empathize, understand where we're coming from. That's key. Mental health, I hope we continue to grow with it, and I think we're moving in that right direction. I would say, to your point, kind of mental health starts, for me at least, being honest with yourself, mm -hmm. and that's the toughest thing to do. You know, I think it's, people are able to be honest with other people before you're able to be honest with yourself and who yeah. you are and how you feel and how you work through feelings. For me personally, I just, mental health has started to become more important in my daily life, down to my relationships, how I interact with people, how I interact with myself, and mm -hmm. I've been paying more attention to to your point about intention to words, and not only how I speak to others, but how do I speak to myself? You know Absolutely. what I mean? I wake up yeah. making a point to tell yeah. myself in the mirror, you know, you can take on today, you can do this, you're ready for this, or you know, you got that, don't worry about it, you're strong, you can do it. And when I can't, being honest with myself about that too, mm -hmm. you know, you can't do this, and it's okay, <laughs> you know? Maybe you can't make it to brunch, because you know, you, you're just, you just need a moment it. to yourself, yeah. you're not feeling it today, you know what I mean? And that's fine, and we all have those days. What do you say to people who still have that stereotypical black man in their head. Um, I think it's important for people to know that we're not one dimensional. Mm -hmm. We are multifaceted. Yeah. So what do you say to those people that still have that stereotype in their head? For me, I think it's, um, you can say, but I think it's a lot easier to show. Like a lot, a lot of times you have to show people, you know, which you aren't. Even when I, um, sometimes I walk into a room, people have certain perceptions and it's like, once they say, oh, you know, oh, you're not who I thought you were. Exactly. You know, you have to open your mind mm -hmm. up and sad to say, talking to people can be like talking to a brick wall. You know yeah. what I mean? Especially if they already have their mind made up. You kind of have to show them. And I think the best way to do that is back to what we talking about, being your best self and being the black mm -hmm. man that you are and showing them that, oh, he's not like, you know, typical. And, and also not getting too hung up on trying to show people that I think it's if that's someone's viewpoint, I feel sorry for them. That's sad that that's all you yeah. think a black man is. That's so sad, so sad. You're but for you, Omar, as a black gay man, yeah, how is that experience when you have to walk into a room yeah. and it's like all eyes are on you because you're not the stereotypical, you um, know? <laughs> I walk into every room being my black gay ass self, and I mean that it's like, is and that's another kind of catch 22 is like people think even being gay has a certain feel they're like oh you're wearing jordans you know it's like what what are you talking about like i am feet right like what i am who i am mm -hmm. the things that i am being black being gay are part of my life experience the things that i do have to that i come with challenges and challenges i have to face every day whether that be just walking to a room or just seeing somebody on the street you know they build these presumptions about it in those moments i use those as they kind of fuel my fire. It's like, you know what? I can't wait to prove you wrong. I can't wait to show you exactly yeah. who I am. And I can't wait to sit there and watch you eat every word that you had mm -hmm. in your head made up about me. I, I think what he, what Omar said was key as far as you cannot tell, you know, you have to show. And you come to a point in your life where like, you realize everybody not going to be on the same page as you. <laughs> yeah. Everybody not going to be you, you know? <laughs> so what you can only do is live your life through examples 
of how you want to be treated, how you want to be loved, and how you think, you know, how, how you just want to be perceived. <laughs> the, the thing that you can do, though, is live your life in your purpose. You can't, you can't have black wealth without, without a sense of community hmm. as a whole. My last thing is yeah. financial literacy. Mm. We talk all the time about building black wealth and why I think that is the most important thing that we need to create and generate. What is the best piece of financial advice that you received and that you implement into your life? I mean, for one, try to learn about investing. Putting it in a savings bank, which I think we grow up probably a lot of time learning, it's not gonna gain interest. Mm -hmm. But there's certain things like ETFs, mutual bonds that are shown to be less risky, but also gain money over time. Mm -hmm. You know, that 30,000 that may sit in your bank account will get a few cents a year versus it can get a few hundred, a few thousand dollars mm -hmm. over a year. And it's still not risky. Just making your money work for you, you know, and they, you know, there's all these statistics and whatnot, the richest people in the world and things that they do. They don't have all their money in the savings account. Their money is right. working. Their mm -hmm. money is gaining more money. And if we're being honest, uh, getting wealth doesn't come through one stream of income. Mm -hmm. You know, it's figuring out how you can get that second, third stream of income. I'm still working on that. I'm not even there yet. Don't be afraid to treat yourself a little bit, mm -hmm. you know? But it doesn't mean splurging every check. But sometimes we have to show ourselves where our money is. You know, and what's this going to? And that helps us feel better too. Yes. To spend a little bit, you know, like, I got a little bit of, get a little bit extra. Let me spend it on myself. You should always be saving, putting money away, because when we talk about building uh, the black community, finances is the foundation of that. Black wealth comes from finance, mental stability, and love. You know, you can't you can't have black wealth without without a sense of community hmm. as a whole. Don't wait for someone to tell you how to make it's, money. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Look yeah. out, seek out knowledge, yeah. learn. Mm -hmm. um, a friend of mine, Stefan, has a book called um, Finesse and Finances, and he wrote that just from like millennial perspective, but to make it digestible for people who don't grow up learning, you know, know what an IRA is and things mm -hmm. like that. You know what I mean? You don't, you know, I look at my W-9 sometimes, I'm like, uh, <laughs> you know, right. <laughs> what, what is my It's like, what is this? <laughs> I called my mom. There's just so much more that we could dive into, but I just want to thank my panel right here. Um, become a sponge and just soak all this up. I hope that you guys like, comment, and subscribe to the Fuse YouTube channel, and we'll see you all next time. This is great. This is great. Yeah. <laughs> Come on.